everyone. And on behalf of Maja House, I'd like to wish you good evening. And I'm really glad that all of you have taken time out to come for this new session. What we are trying to do today is to begin a new series, and it's called Punjab in the Diaspora. It's a new series of conversations and talks initiated by Maja House in an effort to celebrate the history and the experiences of the Punjab and to facilitate transnational dialogues. Our intention is to focus on the plural imaginations and visions of and for Punjab and to extend our reach for uh, extend our reach to Punjabi spaces and to Punjabi communities located worldwide. Through these conversations, we will trace, a, trace and craft new narratives of identity and of culture and belonging in an increasingly globalized world. I'd like you to join us as we forge fresh links and connections with the Punjabi diaspora and commemorate the diverse cultures of Punjab. In our first session today, we have a very special guest Ashwinder Kundan Singh, Ash Singh, as he is known. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about him and about Gunbir, who's going to be in conversation with him today. Ash was born in Toronto in an immigrant Sikh family, extremely popular in school with an impressive academic record and sports credentials. He was voted student council president, the first ever minority president in the school's 50 year history. It was when he joined the Chinese University in Hong Kong that he started his first online platform, Sikpal.com, the first Sikh social and business network. From there to today, where he's a successful investor, entrepreneur, and academic, and a spiritual seeker, Ash has set high benchmarks indeed. And above all, I would say that um, he, uh, he uh, many of the things that he's going to talk about today uh, as a spiritual seeker and as somebody who set out new platforms, especially using his technology uh, background. Uh, he's chairman of Kundan Holdings and he's an adjunct professor of entrepreneurship at top business schools worldwide. And he's leveraged his digital background to create these platforms like Sikiwiki, uh, dot org, Turbanizer and RateMyTurban.com. He's also a basketball fan and he's a co-owner of the Singapore Slingers. To engage him in conversation today, we have Gunbir Singh, who is president of Dilbir Foundation. He's chairperson Punjab State World Wildlife Fund. Gunbir is chairman, Eco Amritsar and patron Pani Collective, financial secretary, Khalsa College Charitable Trust, vice president, Bhaivir Singh Nivas Astan, and member of Sri Guru, uh, uh, Guru uh, Singh Sabha based in Amritsar. He's an influencer and the things that he's most concerned about uh, and to bring about social change uh, because of his focus on ecology and environment, on education and, and, and he adv advocates for these, um, you know, constantly and uh, which is why I would say he's a huge influencer in uh, Amritsar and in Punjab and in India. So um, wonderful to have both of you here today with us this evening. Gudmir, I'd like to hand over to you now to please take this conversation forward. Thank you, Preeti. Thank you so much for those warm words. And uh, uh, thank you again, uh, Arvindar Chamakji, who's uh, in the background hosting us and doing all that is required to be done today. Ashwinder Kundan Singh, this thank evening you. in, in Amritsar, where we, are, where we are hosting this from, Ash, so good to see you. And um, uh, you're at the moment in Canada, um, stuck there like all of us and not being able to move. And I know for a fact that you've got, uh, you're quite a footloose guy and you've been traveling all over the world throughout your life, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, well, first, let me just acknowledge everyone. Thank you for inviting me. And, and thank you for the warm introduction, Preeti. I mean, I should have invited my mom to come. It's always nice to, you know, uh, hear some nice things. My mom's going to finally say, oh, he's done something. You know what I mean? Like, uh, so thank you. Thank you for the warm introduction. Thank you, Manja House, for having me. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm currently here in, uh, in Toronto. Um, and uh, obviously now with COVID-19, there's been a, a real, uh, you know, change in how we're all operating. But, uh, you know, at least, uh, at least it's not winter here in Canada, right? So for those of us that, uh, 
that have come here, you know, summers are actually not that bad here. So uh, uh, it's, it's all good and spending time with my kids and uh, just, just uh, you know, re reconfiguring, right? Which is what's happening now in COVID-19. We're really rethinking what matters. And um, I think uh, it's given us a lot of opportunity to spend some time within as well as uh, get more time with the kiddos, right? So having some fun with them here in Toronto. Yeah, indeed. Uh, welcome, everyone. I hope you enjoy this uh, first session on the Punjabi di diaspora. Um, Ash, let's get, get going and, and talk about your family's journey to begin with from India to Canada. Hanji. Uh, Hanji. This was way back. So how did this happen? Yeah, so my, um, you know, obviously there is a, a fascination with Punjabis and Canada, right? There's this uh, this strong link, I could say, between uh, uh, the the two the two areas. Um, so my parents uh, were born uh, in India. Uh, my father uh, moved to Canada uh, as an engineer. So he graduated from IIT Delhi and um, had an opportunity to come to Canada. Um, as a scholar, which which was uh, which was I think uh, an interesting way to get into the country. A lot of IIT uh, engineers at the time didn't want to stay in India. In today's world, the IIT engineers they want to stay and build in, in India, but in the 60s they all wanted to leave. So they were all moving to North America. They were going to Silicon Valley. They were going to Toronto. They were going to New York. Um, so my father moved here the night just uh, in in the 19 the late 60s. Um, and finished his MBA in Canada. So he had an opportunity to engage and uh, uh, build, uh, build his uh, academic credentials here because there was always that challenge, right? Uh, Canada is a different place now, 50 years later, uh, 60 years later. Um, and so, so uh, he, he did have those regular challenges uh, as a minority, um, as, a, as a proud Sikh, he had uh, some challenges there, but um, they moved, they settled in, and uh, like most families, we lived in a joint family, so we had two families living in the same house because that's how you kind of made things work. So I had, uh, uh, you know, there was five kids in the house. I had two, two, two cousins and a brother and a sister. Um, and, and so that's kind of how we were, we were raised. Now, I'm not from Brampton, by the way, if you guys are wondering, okay? Uh, one of the unique experiences that I had is my parents, and I, I don't know if this is Maybe, uh, maybe a trick that the taxi driver played on my parents when they arrived to Canada. But I was actually born in a place, born and raised in a place called Thornhill. And Thornhill was actually a 90% Jewish neighborhood. And that played a really important role in my understanding, not just about kind of the community and the success of the Jewish community, but it also helped me understand how to take my personal journey forward, right? As a minority, as a Sardar, um, and how I looked at myself and how I, I, I operated. Um, so the foundational elements uh, growing up uh, with Jewish people was very formative for me. Wonderful, so good to hear. And, uh, but uh, you know, you, you one person who's been traversing continents, uh, one after the other, right? So- then after you did your schooling in in uh, uh, in Canada in Toronto, you I moved did. on to Hong Kong, right? Yes, yes. So how come suddenly from Canada from there, all the yeah. way to Southeast Asia? Yeah. So what happened was is um, you know my father uh, you know had a lot of foresight, and when we were growing up in Canada, you know when you look at the Chinese work ethic. Okay, nothing against uh, the Punjabi work ethic or the any other community's work ethic. But when you look at the Chinese work ethic, you see a lot of, um, you know, just just how 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 much energy, effort, dedication they put in everything that they do. And so uh, I had the opportunity to attend a, a pretty reputable business school in Canada. And uh, I had an opportunity to go on exchange to complete my degree overseas. And um, when I started looking at where I wanted to go, I wanted to go to the places that had the nicest resorts, right? I'm like, I'm going to go on, I'm going to go on exchange. I want to go to Thailand, right? And uh, my father put his foot down and he said, no, no, no. you want to figure out a, a, a place where you can go and throw yourself in the deep end, okay? 
And what, what that means is that, you know, in a place like China, in a place like Hong Kong, because Hong Kong had been, ha the handover was completed. It was uh, now Chinese territory. Um, being able to compete as a Sardar, as a minority, uh, with not a lot of money, uh, not a lot of access, um, was a big challenge for me. I was 21 at the time. And so the vision my, my parents always had for me was throw yourself in the deep end, make it difficult for yourself when you're young, because then you're going to formulate um, a thicker skin and you can adapt to the rest of the world. And so that's another reason why, like, you know, uh, my parents weren't like super well off. They, they, they did what they could. But what they wanted us to do was to have that diversity, because most people in the world, you, you, the, the vast majority, right, 90, 95 percent of the world is never going to leave their country. OK. And so being able to uh, go to other places allows you to open your mind and see how the rest of the world is working. And that's what's helped me as an entrepreneur, um, as a professor of entrepreneurship. Uh, and just in terms of my, my own life, uh, life appreciation. So uh, going to Hong Kong was, uh, was definitely a big challenge. I had no money. <laughs> I was a broke university student, Sardar, walking around in, in China. You know what I mean? It was definitely um, a, a life, a life um, learning experience for me. Phenomenal. So uh, tell me, uh, Ashwinda Kundan Singh started a company and by the age of 22, had already sold one. So yes. how does that happen? What was this company about? Uh, and, and why did you sell it? Yeah, I mean, what I'll do is I'll give you a, a kind of a background as to why I even started an entrepreneurship in the first place. Um, and, and I know there is um, a lot of people that have a vision of the Punjab relationship or the India relationship with Canada. You have a lot of people entering the workforce um, and moving up the ranks. Um, I know that there is also this fascination because I also have two doctors in my family as well. Okay. I know that there's this connection piece between uh, uh, being a doctor here in Canada. But when I was young, you know, I, I actually thought to myself that, um, you know, I have a certain level of capabilities. Uh, I have time, energy, the internet had come out. And I asked myself, wouldn't it be good for me to create something that would allow me to be the master of my own destiny, right? And I didn't want to limit myself to just be a banker or just be a lawyer or a doctor. I thought, hey, let me see if I can create a lot more wealth uh, and access when I'm younger, because that's going to allow me to have the flexibility later on in life. Now, it was a high risk, right? It's a lot easier to kind of go into industry and, you know. Um, so what I wanted to do is I said, what's better time to do it than when I'm in school? So when I was in school, um, you know, any money I had, I was spending money on building a bit my business. I wasn't spending time. I didn't drink. I, I didn't party. I didn't drink. I didn't womanize. I just focused on um we are losing on, your uh, your audio uh ash okay no problem can you guys hear me now are we okay yeah we are okay now Good. all right so no you problem. started your company uh, while you were studying in hong kong right yes yeah so uh, at the time this is before when facebook was just about to start right um we said hey why don't we build a software a social networking software company and focus on corporates, right? And so a lot of things when you're thinking about um, um, when you're building a company, it's about team execution and timing, right? And timing in, in, in our, in our uh, cultural context is, you know, we say Guru Skirpa, right? You're at there the right place. There is an audio issue, right uh, Ash. Can you, can you see your Wi-Fi connection, please? Are we okay? Just tell me if there's still a sound problem on, uh, I'm, I'm okay. You guys sound perfect yes. on my side. No, but I think probably Gunbiji, it's uh, somewhere your connection is yeah, your audio I can hear, getting disrupted. Yeah, I, because I can hear Ash very uh, Am I? loud and clear. Gunbir, okay, Uncle, am I good to go? My, yeah, we're, we're good to go. We're good to go. Okay, so this company that you set up uh, was, uh, was uh, it was a, a web-based company. 
Yes, yes. So we we decided to create uh, an online company similar to how Facebook had started off, and we were focused on selling to corporates. And so we again right place at the right time. I was um, running around like crazy trying to find a customer, right? Which is what you normally do when you start out, uh, not really knowing. I was a ripe twenty one year old, um, uh, you know, fresh fresh uh, university kid um, and we were able to get some early traction on the business and again the team was good the execution was good um, and we were at the right timing right and timing sometimes plays a very important role in all of your life milestones so for us we were very blessed um, you know with God's grace we were able to find a buyer for the business and for me who I was at you know it was in university I, I didn't have a lot of money I was on a diet of uh, steamed vegetables and oatmeal because all the money I was using was for the business. Uh, okay. What ended up happening was, is we ended up um, uh, selling that business eight months after I graduated to, uh, to a company in Singapore. Okay. And um, for being a Canadian, um, you know, who's lived in winter weather, um, I, I discovered that Singapore is actually a, not a bad place. It's a tropical island, uh, low tax, and uh, year-round warm weather. So um, I was supposed to be there for um, 18 months. I ended up spending 15 years there, right? So I enjoyed uh, my time in Singapore. So that was kind of the next phase of my life um, where, I, uh, where we built and, and spent time in Singapore. Okay, and, and if you recall, the first time that we met was in 2007, right? In, in Angie, Singapore. Yeah. Yes. And uh, you had just got married a while ago uh, to uh, uh, my dear friend Karan Singh Takral's uh, really lovely daughter, Simran. Haji, yes. So those were those Angel Gate days, right? Yes, yes. So would you tell yes. us about this, this, uh, this very interesting venture that you were part of called Angel Gate? Okay, I thought you were going to ask me how I, how you how you can marry somebody who's way out of your league. I thought maybe that was your question. Okay, because <laughs> no, no. uh, I can you know like it's interesting. I teach at business schools now, um, and and people ask me about building startup, and I say, hey, you know what, uh, you know who you marry makes even more of a a difference in your life. So you know uh, they don't teach that in business school right how to well, we'll come back to, to find... that uh, okay. as to how right. do you find uh, a lovely girl and marry okay. her okay uh, yes yes however we know who's married on this chat right so we have to be careful who we're giving this advice to right <laughs> so uh, but uh, what we've done is when when i went to when i moved to 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 singapore it was a very interesting situation for me i was 22 years old um, again uh, I, I no one knew who i was and i had this a uh, real opportunity to create and do whatever I felt, you know, and I had a little bit of money in my pocket too. And so uh, it was a really interesting situation. And I think this relates to the current generation and just people in general. What you find in life is that sometimes the people that love you the most are the ones that sometimes hold you back, right? You know, my parents, my network, they were immigrants in Canada and all they wanted for me was to uh, have an, a good life, you know what I mean? Uh, earn a good living, settle down and all that stuff. But what was interesting for me was I was 22 years old in Singapore. No one knew who I was. And I was able to craft kind of my own destiny. And I asked myself, what do I want to do? Um, and so what I did was, is I asked myself if, if, you know, I'm 22 years old, what, you know, how do I contribute to my community? And so the first thing that I did, and I remember I came up with this idea as I was landing, is we came up uh, with the idea of SikiWiki. Now, some of you might have been on this website now. Uh, SikiWiki is a wiki we created for the Sikh community as a central online repository for all Sikh knowledge around the world. So if you have Googled this before, if you wanted to know any information about the, the you know, uh, backgrounds of the Sikh gurus, translations, and so on and so forth, we get around 10 to 15,000 people a day now, right? Um, and, and so we were really happy about um, starting there. So what, what, I, what I believe is that, you know, when you think about your, uh, this vant, as we call it in our community, uh, it's, it's, it's important to kind of put your, put your money, put your time, put your energy, and also put your skills to use. 
So that was the first fundamental thing. And every year we're working on something that will help um, parts of the community and, and in the outreach. And we love technology, so we do that. So, uh, and, and we'll share some links after the event. We've been working on a project recently. We'll come back to that, but uh, uh, about Angel's Gate. Yeah, with Angel's Gate, what we did was, is uh, we, you know, entrepreneurship was, was all the rage, right? A lot of people were interested in understanding how to become an entrepreneur, how to raise money. And so what I decided to do was I produced a television show uh, called The Angel's Gate. And, um, you know, this was one way I kind of connected with my father-in-law to be, I, I put him on the show. He was actually one of the, uh, the angels on the show. So uh, I think he was one of the first Punjabi, um, uh, first Punjabi uh, entrepreneurs to be featured uh, in a show like this. And basically what we did was, is we allowed anyone in Singapore, actually anyone in the region to come pitch their idea on television for money, okay? And so we set up a fund and we were giving money and we were building that up and we launched that and that hit, I think, 50 million homes and hotels in the region. Um, so we got some good uh, exposure for it and uh, then we licensed it internationally. Uh, we went to France, we went to the Cannes Film Festival and we, we, and we, we sold the, the license to it to uh, other, um, other broadcasters uh, around the world. That's interesting. Yes, I, I remember seeing a picture of that and it was a very interesting picture how you pitched it. Uh, you know, each one of you were, and they, they, they were these Top Gun investors, including uh, uh, All in White. And yes. uh, there uh, was Karan Singh Takral and you uh, there. And yes. uh, uh, you guys had fun there, didn't you? Yes, it was, it was a great experience. And again, like, um, you know, to kind of connect that back into the relevance of today, one of the other things that I believe very strongly of is that, um, you know, job creation, right? And so one of the fine things, one of the points that I've always tried to focus on, and that's why I teach entrepreneurship, right? People, you know, entrepreneurship sounds like a big, complicated word. But basically what I feel I do is I teach and I inspire people to become job creators. Because when I looked at kind of my North Star and what was important to me is I realized that if you can give every family a salary, okay, that equates to a happy home, right? A family that doesn't have money is not a happy family. So part of entrepreneurship and Angel's Gate and all the stuff that we did around that was really getting people to rethink, you know, if you're down on your luck, you've lost your job, you're not getting paid enough, you know? The world has now changed where anyone can become that, um, that, that job creator, right? That entrepreneur. And, and so that's something that I think has been part of my ethos for the last 15 years that I've been um, involved with uh, industry. But how did you make that shift from entrepreneurship to being a professor? And you uh, have been a professor in the, in the, in the leading uh, global business school in Seattle. Hanji. And I also know that your classes are attended by 80% of the students who, who come yes. in for the entrepreneurship, right? Yeah. So and, how and, come you and, made that shift? Yeah. So, so the thing is, is and, and, you know, uh, you know, when, when you have um, uh, speaker sessions like this, what I try to do is I try to be as uh, authentic and honest about the reality of what happened. So I sold my first company. I was 23, 24 years old. Um, and INSEAD, INSEAD is the number one uh, uh, business school in Europe, right? And it's ranked one of the top three, top four globally with Wharton and Stanford and Harvard. And um, what happened was, is uh, I sold my company and one of the professors reached out to me. And he said, Ash, I'd like you to be a, a guest speaker. And um, I thought to myself, I'm like, I, you know, my parent, my dad did an MBA, maybe I should do an MBA, but I knew I wasn't smart enough to get into the school, right? You know, like this is a in Seattle, and you know, you need a GMAT, you need all these things. So I'm like, yeah, I said, let me, um, let me volunteer a little bit. And uh, maybe they'll, uh, they'll maybe, maybe somebody will write me a letter of recommendation and I can uh, <laughs> Go, go do my MBA there, right? Because my siblings are doctors and professionals. I said, maybe I should do something, right? And- uh, So you mean so the ticket to get to do an MBA in the top business school is to start teaching there, right? 
Well, no, if you're not as intelligent as most people, right? Like your son is a very intelligent boy. He doesn't need to volunteer, right? But you know, the son, if you're not smart enough, you do two things. You either volunteer a lot and get a letter or you write a large check to the school, okay? So I was like, the cheaper option is to, uh, you know, uh, start teaching. So what happened was, is I gave a, a talk and then that turned into another talk. And then the, the, the faculty came and they said, Ash, you know, the kids connect with you because you've actually done it. You've gone through the entrepreneurial journey. Would you like to teach here? And I looked at them and I said, wait a second. Um, and I realized one thing, by the way, the first thing that crossed my mind was, I'm 25 years old. These MBA students are older than me. Why are they asking me? And then I realized that because I was a Sardar with the Dari and the Pug, I think they thought I was like in my mid thirties. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that's where my, that's where it helped. I was like, wait a second, they don't know how old I am. So I didn't say anything. And what happened was, is um, I asked myself, I'm like, wow, they're asking me to teach here, which means that I could learn for free. Okay. And uh, create something and really give back. And then I have a, a platform. Now, INSEE had, had students from 80 countries around the world, um, and that was beautiful for me because uh, what was interesting was when I started teaching, a lot of the people that went to INSEAD had never seen a Sardar, right? So just to kind of link it back to what we're talking about with the Punjab diaspora, it, it gave me a great opportunity to communicate about who we were as people, right? I would have students from Azerbaijan and, and African countries where they didn't have the exposure to Sikhs. So that was a really powerful personal journey for me. But just being able to interact and uh, create courses and content on how to start up um, was a really powerful experience for me. And what we wanted was, is we wanted our students to raise money because raising money would equate to job creation. And so um, over the last 15, it's been like 12 years now, um, our students have now raised over a billion dollars of capital and created tens of thousands of jobs around the world, right? And, and a lot of these people, I don't know, I don't have an equity in their business. I, I don't have, I'm not a financial beneficiary, but the idea that we are planting seeds around the world to create jobs uh, is a very powerful uh, thing for me. And that's kind of my, my North Star these days. So being part of INSEAD and then being invited to IIT, uh, where my dad went to school, which was really nice. Um, and, 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 and this is what I tell people. I say, I'm not smart enough to go to IIT. I'm only smart enough to teach there, you know? So, um, so having that opportunity and teaching in China, which has been amazing. So at some of the top schools, they let me teach in English. Um, and they have a Chinese translator with me in real time translating what I'm doing has been a real uh, powerful experience. And one of the conversations I always have is this conversation about Punjab, who I am, uh, what my identity means to me. Um, and we've had a real powerful uh, opportunity. Um, and I'll share a personal experience, if I may, uh, on this. Um, I don't know, Uncle G, if you remember, there was a time when religious symbols were banned in France. Right. Right. And there was a time when if you wore a hijab or you wore, um, if you were a Jewish person, you wore a yarmulke or a dastar, a turban, it was banned. And so I had a, a very interesting opportunity where I was invited to teach at INSEAD in France at the same time. Now, if I was a public school teacher, I wouldn't have been allowed to teach in that country. And mm -hmm. so I, it was a beautiful experience for me because I had an opportunity to teach there. And we had some French ministers that were, te that were learning from me. And they came and they thanked me. They're like, thank you very much. We learned. I speak a bit of French as well. And uh, in French, uh, you know, when I was speaking to them, I told them, I said, I'm very blessed that INSEAD has given an opportunity for a person like, that looks like me to teach in your country, you know? And so when we think about uh, opportunities, you know, it's always good to kind of leverage the platforms that you have to try to explain concepts and try to, you know, um, share your experiences with people and um, hopefully bring upon some positive change as well. I think you are, you, you know, Ash, you are such a humble soul. Uh, just saying that you you got into INSEAD because they didn't figure out how old you were. I don't quite subscribe to that. Uh, 
the fact of the matter is that you at that young age created value when very few people were uh, were coming out with companies and and being able to sell them at that time and that is the key that that uh, that led them to invite you onto INSEAD for a for a speaker and then you went on to guide so many young people to the extent that they have raised over 1 billion dollars your students today how does that happen yeah i think you know and and um, the, the, that's a question that my parents get asked and they always have this strange bewildered expression you know <laughs> when i went to singapore they're like pata nahi ki karda pya hai utthe ki karega you know what i mean that standard process the reality yeah. is is this and again um it comes back to the truth right the truth of the matter was um when i was young uh, and this starts back to my earlier story about uh, being raised in the jewish community what i learned very young is that uh, at the end of the day you can talk about success you might see me as a successful person but i'm only successful because i'm sitting on the shoulder of giants and that's it and so people ask all the time they say ash you know i'm trying to make this work right but i can't really move it and the first question i ask them is is who is your average five okay who are the people that are guiding you whether it's from a spiritual progression because we want to have that in our life you know your personal progression right um you know your relationships and your occupational components and a lot of people don't take a stab at that right they hang out with the same people over and over again and what happened with me was when i moved to singapore and i didn't know anyone okay i didn't have to attend any weddings <laughs> i didn't have to go hang out with people i didn't you know um i i had an opportunity to recreate my average five right mm -hmm. so uh for instance uh karan singh takral uh, my, my father in law you know he 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 liked me and you know he liked me enough to introduce me to his daughter he was one of those people but there was other people gurpal singh said there's so many amazing people and i just recreated that and what happens is is that you know you sit on the shoulder of all these giants and eventually you're going to have some success right so the sikhya the wisdom um all comes from from them right you know uh you know it's interesting that where you are saying that your life was guided on the shoulders of uh, of giants who you interacted with and and yeah. which led you to the position that you are today you have hundreds of people who are leading successful uh, lives and they will say the same thing for you because you led them to being where they are today yeah and, so, and, and yeah yeah and and and, and th there's a concept of knowledge too you know i've been spending a lot of time over the last 2 years really studying moon mantra right and for those of us that are part of punjab we probably have been born and raised and understand the guru nanak dev ji's mool mantra right and uh, i i believe you know there's one of the words in the mool mantra is gur prasad right and gur prasad for me is a very interesting word because it comes around to the knowledge right and and there is a time when uh you you acquire knowledge from somebody but the knowledge actually sits in the universe right i am just a channel of knowledge so when i talk to my students and they thank me I just tell them you should thank the universe right because I was just at the right place to be a knowledge transfer because the knowledge is owned by the universe is owned by the divine I just was a channel at some point in time and there was a uh, you know guru skirpa connected us and you've succeeded but then the question I asked them uh is um what are you doing to create jobs and how are you going to pay it forward right and that's another thing too you know we think about how you want to live your life and one of my advisors at insiad told me this i asked him the same question i said you're so successful what do you do now and he said something he, i asked him why do you teach you got so much money so much access everything is there and you know what he said to me he said ash do you know what i do every morning i when i wake up in the morning i'm trying to be the luck in somebody else's life right and so that's kind of where we're at right now whether it's the luck in your kids or the your neighbors or the work that you do if you can be the luck in somebody else's life i think that's a nice way to live right it's a nice way to um you know carry on your your journey in in life 
So it, uh, that's phenomenal. Uh, perhaps I should ask you, uh, you know, you had in 2007, you were judged that as the Yahoo's website of the year, okay? <laughs> and in Bloomsburg in 2009, rated you as Asia's top young entrepreneur. Yes. Right? Yes. Then you yeah. became one of the, one of the sought after professors in INSEAD. You? you started a startup facilitator facility. Mm -hmm. You inspired people to raise so much of capital and become successful in life. And now you're in spiritual seva as well, which we'll come to now. Uh, but what do you do from here? Is it going to be primarily the spiritual seva that, that you, we have discussed and that we at the Lbeer Foundation and you are going to work together for? Thank you. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm 38 now, um, so I, I am a little bit older. You know, when I hear young entrepreneur, I'm like, you know, my daddy's, my daddy's starting to turn white now and uh, age, is, age is kicking in. Um, you know, again, uh, a lot of that, you know, I, I would say was the right place at the right time. There's some, you know, everyone, there's so much capability and so much potential in the world. Um, I think I'm, I'm reaching that phase in my life where... Um, it's, it's very interesting to see how the universe plays. And um, I, I've had the opportunity to hang out. You know, I've gone to some of these uh, Forbes conferences, CEO conferences, and you hang out with those billionaires, people that we idolize, right? In, in India, you, you know, the Ambani's and uh, the Mittal family and all these people that we, we read about. Um, and, and they're all very nice people, by the way. But I'll tell you, one thing that I realized, and this was like 10, 12 years ago, is that that's not a life I want. Right. That's not a life that I want because that's an, you know what I mean? You go from certain circles and you, you have to live a certain life. It's, it's a pressure. It's a life pressure that you, uh, you probably don't want. And so my, my journey right now is, um, you know, we, 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 I love what I do in terms of entrepreneurship and self discovery. And I think, um, another thing that's happening right now in today's world is some of the knowledge, the sikhya, the, the concepts that were originally produced by uh, uh, our prophets like Guru Nanak Dev Ji are going to be more and more relevant now, right? And so we're trying to spend a lot more time to figure out ways to help uh, elevate the community. But the thing for me, to be honest, is, and I'm not, I'm no expert, right? And I'm no, you know, I'm no uh, spiritual leader by any means. Um, one of the reasons I do this as well is it helps me learn, right? Uh, it's my journey, right? As well, people don't realize this, but when you become involved with a project or if you're a professor of entrepreneurship, you raise your bar because people, by teaching, you're learning as well. And so my journey was, as I said, hey, you know, instead of um, putting my disvant in a, in, a, in a gurdwara or an institution, let's use digital, right? Let's think digitally now. We, we, everyone has a smartphone. And so we, we developed Siki Wiki. Uh, that was a project. We also did a, a project called the Turbinizer. This was after 9-11. So uh, after 9-11, uh, you know, wearing a Dastar was a problem. I would be randomly checked at uh, airports uh, around the world, right? And um, so I created an app. Uh, it's online on the App Store. It's actually a pretty good app. Now we did a new version of it where you can visualize and see what you look like in a turban. And when I get randomly checked at airports, I share this experience with the security guard. You know, he checks me. I'm like, can I show you what you would look like with one with a turban? <laughs> and uh, we did that. And now we even have dotty mode because so many people from China want to know what it's like because the Chinese people can't grow beards like like we do. Uh, so that's another kind of Punjabi diaspora sharing. By the way, we've turbanized like eight. 10 million people around the world. <laughs> uh, so we've shared our turban culture and uh, our ability to grow really nice beards, which is, uh, is actually a challenge, by the way. There's a lot of people in uh, Taiwan, China, Japan that are very envious of us, by the way. So that's the turban. I'm going, to, yeah. I'm going to bring you to the contemporary times now. You know, these are prolonged COVID times. And you have now devised a device called Nanak Times, which, which, uh, which sort of connects you or gives you the opportunity to live by Guru Nanak's Mool Mantra, right? So 
tell me how in these troubled times can can nanak times provide solace and comfort to people who are stuck sometimes without work mostly without work these days and bored with their lives and uh, the purpose is snatched away from their livelihood and their uh, lifetimes yes well let, let me give a, a quick background uh, on on nanak time um, first off we all we all um, are familiar with mool mantra right if you're if you're in punjab for instance whether you're a, a seeker or not it's it's very interesting uh, we we discovered that Guru Nanak Dev Ji has all, all, over 50 million followers around the world, right? They're not just Sikhs. And we all know the Mool Mantar, Ekunkar, Satnam, Karta Purak, all the way through to Gur Prasad. We've, we've heard it. Our grandmothers have, have recited it with us, right? Usually the grandmothers or the moms, you know, dads as well. But usually it comes from my experience with this part was from my, my Nani. And I asked myself, Guru Nanak Dev Ji came and he ignited a whole religion based on the starting point of these words. How well do I really know this? And what I realized is, you know, I'm a practicing Sikh and I, I, I get asked a lot about my identity, right? My turban, my beard. But when it comes down to the essence of the knowledge, how well do I know Mulmantra? And I asked myself this question honestly. And the reality is, is I have young kids as well. And they do part as well. They've, you know, we always want our kids to learn Japji Saiv and we do all that stuff with them and, and, and they go for Punjabi classes. But I, I asked myself, am I really applying his concepts in my day-to-day -day life? And what I realized is that there's a lot of people out there that might not have a deep understanding of Gurbani, right? They might not have access to people that are, you know. So can we create a simple way for people to learn the key concepts of Mu Mantra, and then meditate on it, apply it in your life, and apply it with other people in your life as well, right? And so we just embarked on this journey and we just focused on nine gems, the first nine words of Guru Nanak Dev Ji. We put it in an app, and it's a free app, by the way. You can check nanaktime.com. You can uh, download it. Uh, hopefully, you find value. And it's on Spotify. We put it everywhere. We just wanted people to have access. But the idea is, is can you level yourself up? There's such a power with what he's done. And what I realized personally, I'm 38 years old. I, I started this journey two years ago. And what I realized, and I was kind of embarrassed because I realized that for the first 35, 36 years of my life, um, I didn't really understand what, you know, my understanding of Mool Mantra and the basis, right, the root of, of Gurbani just wasn't there. You know, I had I memorized Shabads, I had memorized all these other things. So it was a great journey for me to learn um, a lot of these components. And it's in simple English as well. And what we wanted to do was raise people's understanding and hope we can get to that point where we can bring that spirit born uh, person, right, which is something that we read about in books about who the Sikhs were 100, 200 years ago. So the elements that you have in Nanak times are uh, opportunities to meditate, uh, to uh, do your, uh, uh, there are different activities, right, in this, in this Hanji. Hanji. So what we do is, and I can, I, can, um, I, can, I can share my screen if you'd like. Would we like to do a screen share? I know you guys have seen me for a while now. I can do a quick demo of, of uh, just show you maybe, what the app looks like. Maybe Bernie, about uh, a minute of that and then we'll go on. No the problem. Yeah. No problem. We'll, we'll do a quick, uh, I'll do a, a quick present, uh, just a quick slideshow. I'll, just five slides, uh, 10 seconds each, just to explain. I'll just need to be upgraded to host if that's okay. Um, I'm going to share yeah. screen. All right, I just need to, shh, I'm still getting host disabled attendee from screen sharing. One more time, please. Just uh, make sure it's the right person. And, While uh, Chamakji comes down to this, maybe we can do something else in the meantime. Uh, no problem. Yeah, uh, so uh, okay. let me come Let's to continue. another question. Please, go ahead. Go ahead. And that is, uh, you know, every Punjabi, we talked about this when you were here this winter, Hanu. right? Hanu. That, uh, you know, uh, every Punjabi youth, boy or girl, wants to be elsewhere around the world. He'd rather not be here, rather be elsewhere. But those were pre-COVID times, right? Anji, Anji. 
Now, what were the opportunities which were available to youth from Punjab then? And what is the change now? Yeah, so, you know, we, we teach a lot um, on, on COVID-19, digital disruption. Like digital disruption is something we've been focusing on for several years now. Um, and, and what people need to understand is that, the, the, you know, the, we say the world is changing and that seems kind of a very cliche statement. But what's happened now is digital disruption has really changed the landscape and, and how people used to think about, you know, the Punjab relationship to Canada, going there, getting a job. There's all these things that are now going to change with COVID-19, the borders, there's all these other components that are going to be changing. But I think more importantly now is uh, information is now accessible, right? And there's so much access that I think that uh, before you think about where you're going to live, right? And where you want to move, you should really think about what are the opportunities that are presenting to you about your existing skill set, right? And I believe like if I was in Punjab today, I would probably want to stay, right? Because there's so many opportunities. If you look at Punjab as a developing market, you could just do what a lot of smart sardars, I have a friend, by the way, sold a business. He's one of my students. He sold his business for a billion dollars. And what he does now is he builds startups in developing markets. He's in Iran right now, okay? He's a Sardar building startups in Iran. And what happens is, is in places like Punjab, there's so many amazing opportunities to learn what's happening around the world and actually bring it back and create value, right? And so I think understanding information, understanding what the value proposition is, what your parents or your a previous generation benefited from, from a country, doesn't exist anymore. It's very different, right? People ask me, they're like, Ash, I want to go to Canada or I want to go to Singapore. I'm like, listen, I went to Singapore in 2004 and expats were really cool. Like I, I had a Canadian accent. It was great. You know what I mean? Everyone thought I was smart because of my accent. I don't know if it's the same anymore, right? right? Uh, frankly, right? So understanding where things are now, but most importantly, it comes back to the fundamentals, right? Your ability to execute and think like a digital disruptor, understanding how the world works and creating unique opportunities for yourself, right? Another interesting point, you tell your kids to go to university, the truth is the job that they have when they graduate school probably didn't exist when they started, okay? And so that's an important thing to think about when you're educating, right? So the world is moving so quickly, the question is, is how agile are you, right? because you're not gonna to go to Canada and get a government job for 30 years, okay? It's a very tough thing to do now, right? My, my, uh, my Taya got a government job, had the government job for 40 years, great pension, awesome, right? I will tell you, none of us think that we could ever do that again, okay? And we're sitting here in Canada, right? He could open the doors for us, but it's, it, would never, it would never work. So it's about having that sense of realism, right? And I also believe that now is the time for you to go on an adventure. I know that not everyone would like to be an entrepreneur, but besides being a parent, I think being entrepreneurial and thinking outside the box is one of the best journeys you can take in your life. And so I think if you can uh, look at that and be an entrepreneurial thinker, no matter where you are, right? And create value for yourself, I think there's nothing better. Yeah, I think that's, that's very pertinent. Uh, but tell me, uh, Whenever we met, you've been wearing some of the snazziest, super snazziest turbans always. You know? I know, I know. And how and, come and you're Mr. So, I'm so, today? I'm so, I, that's, that's a very good point, Uncle G. You know what? I, I have a turban, uh, uh, I have a, my turban wardrobe is actually in Singapore right now. So one <laughs> of the problems with quarantine is my cool turbans are in Singapore, right? But uh, in Canada, where I think the style, you know, the style here is kind of bland. Like I'm wearing like a boring, well, what I can do, the only cool thing about this jacket is I do put a, I do have a, a, a Sardar on my jacket. I think that's the only cool <laughs> thing about what I'm wearing right now. So I do, you know, wear the, the Sardar image very proudly when I teach as well. But I am quite boring today. I do apologize. Um, <laughs> but, but they all have access to the turbinizer so they can see some of my collection virtually. You can try them on, right? You know? Yes. Um, I, and I'm, I'm, I've seen you in, in, in a few dozen. So I, yes. I, I guess you have more than that. I should have, I should have made a note of that. Actually, I'll make a note. Next time I'm invited, anything Punjab related, I really need to, uh, lift my turban game for the, for the, for, for the sessions. <laughs> yeah. So I'm trying to incorporate the questions that we are getting from uh, our viewers within sure. our talk here itself, instead of asking separate questions, 
So uh, let's talk about uh, startup boot camps as an opportunity for youth in Punjab who are unable to go overseas, whereas they would have liked to do. So yeah. we have agreed to start up uh, to start these uh, uh, accelerators, if I may, uh, yes. for Punjabi youth. So tell us about that and how we can go about uh, and what our plans are. Let's yeah, share it with our viewers. Yeah, and, and so I guess it starts out, you know, what was interesting for me is that um, when I was in Punjab, just a couple of, uh, in December, right, it's been six months now, it feels like just yesterday we were hanging out together. Yeah. But if you think about um, the, 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 the process of going overseas, right, if you actually take a step back, right, and I look at it, and, and my, my father was one of these people that went overseas. And I, even I went overseas, I went from Canada to Singapore. But the thing is, is in Punjab, it's a source of family pride, okay? It's a source of family pride. You have people that brag about it, right? It's like a thing, just like here, if your child goes to Harvard or Stanford, there's this parental kind of societal kind of pressure and one person goes and everyone else knows about it. And at the dinner table, they're all talking about it, right? So I think that is kind of a root cause around this, right? Just sending somebody overseas, okay? not really knowing exactly if it's best for them. And I think that that is kind of the, the, the leading cause of this kind of brain drain that's happening in, in places like Punjab, right? You know, just going overseas to go work at a McDonald's might not be the best thing for that person, right? They might have a better opportunity to create something, develop something in their own market because they know the people, right? And I've done this, guys. I've gone to a place like Singapore and Hong Kong. It's very lonely. <laughs> it's very lonely, right? So forget the, the mental health challenges, but just creating opportunities. We really got to ask ourselves, why are you sending the most powerful, valuable uh, product, which is your kids, the energetic ideas, the entrepreneurial thinking, and sending them to another country? Why, why would you do that, right? You know? And I, I find it very interesting. And it always comes down to, again, how, how the society is looking at people. And until we can remove themselves, and I'll tell you like, um, you know, in, in societies here, everyone wants a doctor as a son, right? Okay. And uh, uh, you know, there's this societal thing. And I'm saying, you know, being a doctor is a great role. And you know, in today's COVID-19, they're doing a lot of seva. However, you might be limiting your child by doing that for them. You want to think about what they can create and put them around the most amazing people on the planet to help them cultivate what they want to do in order for them to have their success, right? Don't think about overseas or just getting that degree or, or, or you know, getting that one, one you know, title because that's not, going to, that's not going to make life success, okay? And so I think it's that rethinking and reprogramming that starts with the parents. And some of the parents might be here right now. You might have, um, you might have kids that are uh, going to university or you want them to go overseas. The question is why, right? Are there better opportunities? And how do you create opportunities, right? You know, Singapore is a small island, right? It's like a small 40 kilometer island. And, you know, they have done so, so many amazing things. They have no resources. They have nothing going for them. Okay. Why have they succeeded as a country is because they have the right talent and all these other com components around them. And so I always tell people, I'm like, think about just your child. Think about the people that are around them. Fix that, those components, and let them grow and create, you know, big things, right? You know, uh, being a doctor is great, respected but it's not gonna create jobs for other people. You might get a receptionist, right? Think about how you're gonna improve everyone else. You know, this concept of Sarvata Pala we talk about, right? After we do our thus, right? That's what I'm talking about. And I think that the rethinking has to start with the parental people, right? My kids were not like the whole doctor thing and all that, and all that stuff is gone. We're not doing any of that, right? You know what I mean? Uh, we're really rethinking what they are going to do as people in the workforce in 2035, okay? That's what our mindset is thinking right now, right? Um, and work yourself back from there. Yeah, I think that's, 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 that's important. Uh, this probably is going to be an era of entrepreneurship rather than, than, than seeking jobs. 
So yeah. uh, that's where perhaps uh, these these accelerators and the startup boot camps would be interesting to catalyze uh, uh, youth to start thinking about doing their own, own thing rather than looking for jobs and looking for opportunities overseas. Yeah, and, and, and Uncle Gia, this relates to some of the work that you do, which I, which I think is amazing. When you think about entrepreneurship, I think you're right, we have to. There's no, you know, if you think about the job losses, I've heard, uh, you know, in the tens of millions of job losses in India right now, right? People are going to enter entrepreneurship, but I think another interesting thing for us to think about is sustainable entrepreneurship, socially conscious entrepreneurship, thinking about how we can level up the Punjab environment. We, you and I have spent a lot of time with yeah. all the, um, you know, all the farmland, right? The dilapidated farmland and all the things that we could do there. Look at what's happening in Holland and bring it to Punjab, right? You know, see what they're doing and how they've, re you know, cultivated and created opportunities. So I think when we think about, you know, uh, taking it back to kind of our ancestral components, I went to, uh, you know, we, 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 we spent some time visiting some of the Gurdwaras and, and you see some of the cultivation that's happening, sustainable cultivation. How does everyone benefit, not just yourself, right? Because the other interesting thing about COVID-19 is I know we all aspire to have really nice cars and really nice shoes, but that doesn't matter anymore. Your Mercedes does not matter anymore, right? Like my car is like a, is a very expensive uh, uh, toy now Tesla. for my kids. Yeah, it's, 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 it's worth nothing. Like no one, you know what I mean? You don't, it just helps warm up my kid's tent at night. That's what it is. It's a, it's, it's a glorified toy. So let's think about, let's think about other things beyond uh, just the personal gain. Think about everyone's gain and see where that goes, right? This concept of Sarbatakala, right? And, and connecting with everyone. And I always believe, you know, more boats in the water the water rises, right? And so how does that look for people uh, in Punjab and the diaspora in general? Well, I think, I think it's wonderful. And that's one area where, again, we are working on as to how the outreach for the Punjab farmer and how more and more people connect to the land is, is, some, is an area where we are also working on. So that would mm. be great indeed. Uh, you are at, at the moment, uh, the host so you can let's share with everyone a minute of uh, nanak times and then if you could shift uh, your uh, being a host to chamakti again then we'll wrap it up okay um what i'm going to do here is um let me uh make sure i'm sharing the right screen uh and make sure that it's uh so this is um this is actually a visual of nanak time and uh, can you see my screen? I just want to confirm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And so basically what we did was, is we looked at it from a 2020 perspective. I know we've all used gutkas and there's all this uh, other material, but everyone always has um, uh, 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 the availability of a smartphone. So what we've done is we've hired a world renowned artist and we've depicted the certain concepts of Moomant there. And you can see it here. The image that I have here is a photo that we've designed, which is a photo of an early Guru Nanak, which we don't normally see, right? And you can see him with his finger up, and this is when he discovered, when he, we, when he arrived as an enlightened being, right? Uh, and there's a Sakhi around that. And so what we did was, is we wanted to have visuals that really captivated the eye and got them interested in the concepts of Guru Nanak Devji. The other thing that we've done is we have these guided meditations, just two minutes long, three minutes long, and we have a beautiful voice artist. Uh, like my voice would probably put you to sleep. So we found somebody whose voice is very melodious. And we've done this in English as well, because there's people around the world, uh, people in China, people in Spain, there's people around the world that might not uh, have a full understanding of Gurbani so, or Punjabi. So we've done it in English. And what we've then done and this is a question that people want to know now. You know, you go to your Gurdwara, you interact, you people want to know, how do I apply this in my life now? How do I make a change now? Okay, how do I make a change this week? So we've created exercises for you to think about, right? On how you can apply concepts of Ikunkar and Satnam uh, in your life and how you can apply it with your family and with your friends and your colleagues at work. 
and how do you start to elevate yourself uh, around the basis of, of, of Moon Mantra? Um, we've also put reminders because we always need reminders, okay? Uh, and it will remind you uh, in a polite way just to stay on top of things. Um, As we've run out of time, of, so no we'll have to wrap up and uh, give the that's uh, fine. host to... We're, we're, yeah. that, that's it. That's it. That's, uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pass it back now to... Uh, to uh, and, and my, my last question to you. Tell us about your interest in sport. Um, yeah, I've been, uh, you know, I've uh, been, a, been, been a big sports fan. Uh, the Toronto Raptors. Club, one of the, club that you. <laughs> yes, we've, uh, we've, uh, you know, when I, when I, when I sold my first company, I wanted to, um, I always wanted to play basketball, but my parents wanted me to get a, a good education. So ended up uh, in Singapore and had the opportunity to uh, actually buy a basketball team. So a couple of friends and me, we got together and we uh, were actually, we um, one of uh, one of we were the, were owners of the Singapore Slingers basketball team, which was kind of cool for us. Fantastic. I think at the time, the not many Sardars were into professional sports, so we were one of the first, uh, uh, you know, Sikh Punjabi owned uh, sports teams. Um, so had a lot of fun with that. And uh, if anyone over here is ever in Singapore, I'm happy to host you guys for a Singapore Slingers game. Um, Fantastic! Get, Thank uh, you so much, Ash. My pleasure. I'm going to pass it on to. Preeti, who's, uh, who's uh, come there to remind us that it's time. <laughs> These are my oh, terrible uh, jobs. <laughs> no, my, our pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you Thank so you much. For having us. That was really wonderful to listen to you. And uh, thank you, Gunbi, for that uh, engaging conversation and many, many questions that I think we all had, uh, we would have liked to know from him. Uh, one of the things that I would li actually like to ask you about uh, is job creation. What about India? I mean, how do you think, how do you think we should be looking at this? Because, uh, you know, especially post this pandemic, not even post, we are still in the middle of it, but uh, there's really dismal situation all around. Um, you cannot hear. No, he's muted himself. Hear? No, he's muted himself. Okay, yeah. I'm back. I'm back. Yeah, yeah. The host, the host has allowed me to speak. I can now speak. <laughs> um, so I think, I think um, the reality is, is job creation is not something like before. It was kind of like, do we do it? Do we not? Job creation now is just, it's, it's going to be a paramount for the next five to 10 years. You're going to see new new types of jobs coming in. So if you thought you were going to you're going to do this, even if you want to be a lawyer, the type of lawyer that's going to exist over the next five years is going to be drastically different. So understanding that and recognizing that you need to not just rely on your institution and your degree, you got to rely on your network. You got to continually be upskilling yourself to understand stuff, right? You know, do you understand a little bit of code? Do you understand a little bit of artificial intelligence? You, these are all concepts that might be scary for people, but it's going to be the new norm, right? We've talked to like, for, I'll bring up lawyers as an example, as a kind of a, a the lawyer is not going to be replaced, but the lawyer that does not understand artificial intelligence to scale their practice up is going to be replaced. So it's about your ability to embrace what's happening, embrace just the challenges that you're going to face and understand that it's going to be vastly different. And that's what's going to happen. So where you're investing your time, a lot of us are spending time on Netflix, right? When you can invest the time to level yourself up and teach yourself a new skill, right? Kids of today are learning how to code. You know, my, my kids, what they're creating right now is amazing. And I'm like, wow, you can sell that, right? Like my kids, uh, they're uh, seven and nine they're going to be earning, right? You're going to have a situation where 10 year old kids are going to be earning good money, right? So the world is now going to evolve, right? Um, and so you have to figure out where your place is, right? And I believe part of my, my journey as an entrepreneurship professor and, 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 and just from my, my upbringing as, as a Sikh is that everyone has, the God gives everyone a gift and every single person has some element of awesomeness. You have to discover that now. <laughs> And in today's world, you have to discover your awesomeness and let the world see it and obviously earn an income, but, but yeah. create now, right? So that's my view on it. Yeah, it's very interesting because also, um, I mean, I know that I'm now going way beyond time and I shouldn't, but uh, 
also because there are so many young people leaving Punjab. I mean, that is something which um, uh, is so, so overwhelmingly visible to all of us. And uh, yeah. um, is there anything that you would um, maybe begin or, you know, something that would keep them back actually and be able to give their talents to the land they come from rather than be leaving and going away yeah. for jobs yeah. which are probably not as good? You know, you I, there's about a guy, yes. yeah, and, and I'll, I'll just give you a real life reference, right? Uh, there's a guy named Gunpreet, okay? That's his real name, okay? Uh, I, I live uh, west of Toronto here. I don't live in Brampton, west of Toronto. He works at the KFC here, walking distance from my house, okay? And I'm, I'll admit I eat KFC once a month, okay? So I go to this KFC and this Gunpreet gentleman has been working there for the last three years. And, you know, I know he's a Punjabi and I get to speak with him and he's a PhD holder from Punjab. And he's sitting there at KFC. And I asked him, I said, Gunpreet, dude, you're a smart guy. I've spoken to you now for two, three years. What are you doing here? Why aren't you creating? You're so smart. And so the thing actually is this. The parents need to start thinking about what their kids are involved with before they want to leave. What are they doing in high school? Right? How are you empowering them? Instead of going to um, the bars and the clubs and all that stuff, be a creator. Right? engage yourself, leverage what's happening around the world, right? And be involved with digital. You don't need to move to Canada. <laughs> you don't need to move anywhere. You could do anything that you want, but think about how you're going to do that and re recognize that you have an unfair advantage in your own home. It's the only place where you have, you know, people like Gunbir uncle and other people around you, your family, your friends, but you have to think about this. And so again, it comes back to the parents. It takes a village to raise a child. Who is the village for your child, right? Is it just your Punjabi family that you're going to weddings for and doing what you do at weddings? Or are you finding the best people on the planet to raise that child, to have that confidence, to create something powerful in their own market, right? No matter where you are, whether you're in Punjab, whether no matter where you are. And I've seen people in Uzbekistan, in the desert, Mongolian desert, creating companies. You can do it, right? Punjab has a lot more than some of these places. Yeah. But it's just about the branding and stuff like that. I don't know why you would go leave Punjab and, and go work at KFC. I feel bad for the guy. I'm trying to get him to take my course. I said, please come. <laughs> come to Ivy Business School. Take my course for free. And I've, I've told him, I said, anytime you want to come, please, please, I want you to succeed, right? But that shouldn't be the case, right? What are exactly. the educational institutions doing? What are the parents doing, right? This is a question about these people. Right. Yeah. You know, stop pushing those things because sending your child here to work at KFC, I don't think is the best use of talent. Right. He's an amazing guy that should be in Punjab doing amazing things. You know? Well, the fun part is that we are going to have uh, we're going to bring in Ash to the youth of Punjab here very shortly to mm. to interact. And we start up with these accelerator and uh, uh, startup boot camps. Wonderful. That will be an opportunity to train the youth and to uh, give them direction, which, which exactly. perhaps some of them require. Yeah, yeah. because, you know, I, um, uh, I just wanted to say that, that that is exactly what we've been trying to do at Maja House as well, as Gunbir knows, and um, the fact of trying to make a space where people can actually come and talk and discuss and, you know, bring all of these ideas forward. And, um, mm -hmm. yeah, so I'm really happy that we have uh, had you here today, Ash, talking My pleasure. to us virtually giving people ideas and inspiration, I hope, uh, especially to yeah. young people uh, to yeah. stay and to do something for their own yeah. state rather than yes. leave. So yes. thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, uh, audience. My pleasure. Thank, thank you, you for inviting me. Thank you, You're Ash. always thank welcome. You. And it's really nice, uh, you know, hearing you, Ash. It's, 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 it's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you for, Gunbir Uncle, for arranging this and connecting the dots and all your effort for uh, getting this set up and all the questions. Um, and, uh, you know, look forward to connecting with everyone at some time in the future. And uh, if we, you know, when we launch this program, I hope uh, that I can be, you know, the luck in somebody else's life in Punjab and we can find the next mega job creator uh, that will help, uh, you know, the, the motherland. So with that, I will conclude. We look forward to that. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Such a bye bye, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you so very much for being there. Bye. Good night.